Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Let's Max Warframe. Today we're going to be taking a look at a weapon that I originally leveled and put back in the arsenal after hating it. However, has been given a new leader of life recently, the Emberlist. Now the Emberlist was introduced into the Biolab in the Clan Dojo back in update 10 and it's an infested pistol firing a cloud of toxic gas doing 18.5 pure toxin damage for every round of ammo used and fires a rate of 10 rounds per second. Now because the Emberlist is pure toxic as standard, this means that it can combine extremely well into other combinations of elementals. However, the main thing about this is the fact that even though it may have an elemental combo on the weapon, for example corrosive or radiation, it will still retain the 100% proc rate of the toxic damage, which means it's actually very easy to have multiple status effects running on the Emberlist at any one time. The Emberlist, due to its firing a cloud of toxic gas, fires in a uh, cone in front of the weapon, meaning that it's going to hit multiple enemies at once, and does not suffer from puncture issues like some weapons do. Anything in the cone, regardless of whether it's obstructed, will be hit by the damage from it, making it a very effective weapon in a crowd of enemies. The weapon also comes with a fairly average 10% status chance, which while not high enough to warrant a status build, it's high enough so that once you take into all of the uh, into account all the mods, you will get the non-toxic status rocks fairly often. Now, when you look on the face of it, the Ember List has a whole bunch of problems. Primarily, that six meter range that it comes with as standard. Six meters basically means you have to be right up in the enemy's face before you can realistically hit them, making it tough to use against heavy units with knockdown or clearing enemies whilst downed to your teammates help getting you up again. Now, while you can, but, uh, can combat that with the Ruinous Extension mod, it does mean that you lose a mod slot that you could be using for something else. Secondly, the ammo consumption on the Emberlist is huge, meaning that without ammo mutation, the weapon runs out of ammo very quickly, in something like an Exterminate, let alone the Endless missions. Again, this can be combated with a mod, Primed Ammo Mutation, but once again, you're losing your mod slot for doing this. The weapon also comes with pretty much no critical chance, which means that it's going to lose out on some of that double crit damage. And while it's not really designed for crit, weapons with that low chance tend to do less overall damage purely because you barely ever get that 200% damage multiplier that weapons like the Eberlis come with. But to be fair, when you look at the downsides of the weapon, they're pretty easily dealt with with the use of mods. None of them are really weapon breaking, they just take a little bit of working around. Now the Emberless does come with the option to put on a Syndicate mod, Eroding Blight, which can be acquired by gaining the rank of Revered with the Red Veil, and spending 25,000 standing. Now what this mod does is it increases the magazine size of the Emberless by 200% and adds the Blight effect to it. Now the Blight effect is the Syndicate specific effect for the Red Veil, it means that you have to fill the Syndicate meter above your ammo which takes around 2,000 affinity. And once that's done, it releases a radial wave of 1,000 viral damage, restoring 25% of base energy, and temporarily increasing the movement speed by 10% of the Warframe's base movement speed. The thing about this mod is that, usually the Emberless comes with a 100 round magazine with 210 ammo in reserve. However, with the Roding Blight boosting the magazine size, it starts with 300 in the magazine and 210 in reserve. However, this runs into a few issues. On face value, an extra 200 rounds is definitely going to be something that sounds interesting. However, when you fully empty that first 300 magazine, you're only ever going to get 210 back in it again, because of the ammunition cap. Now, I know this can be circumvented by reloading often to keep the ammo topped up, but if you're doing that, what's the difference between that and having a 100 round magazine? Of course, in extended engagements you can fire for longer and longer, but th is it really something that's a problem? The Emberless comes with a reload speed of 1.5 seconds, which isn't exactly a long time and is unlikely to cause problems in combat. This mod seems to pretty much be an ammo increase for the Emberless, with the Blight Infect included. Do I think the mod is horrendous? No, not really. Do I think it's necessary and improves the weapon so much that we should lose another mod slot for it? Honestly, not really. 
that's not to say that it's pointless, and I can see how some people would use it, but personally, I wouldn't use it myself, and that really is down to personal preference. Okay, so let's move on to starting to mod the Ember List. Now, it does come with a dash polarity as standard, and we're going to add five former to the weapon. We're going to add three Vs and two dashes. Now, we've got a whole bunch of mods that are remaining the same between all three of our builds. We've got Hornet Strike for damage, Barrel Diffusion for multi-shot, Lethal Torrent, which is going to further increase that multi-shot and also increase the fire rate of the weapon. We've got Primed Pistol Mutation to make sure we're going to be kept topped up with ammo at all times. And this can be taken all the way to the top if you want to. And we've also got Ruinous Extension, which is going to increase the range of the weapon. Now for our Grenier build, we're going to go with Viral and Heat, which is Pathogen Rounds Deep Freeze for the Viral damage and incre that includes the base toxin damage of the weapon as well and we've got primed heat to charge there now if we switch this build out you can switch convulsion and deep freeze and you will get the corrosive heat combo which is good against the non-corrosive projection build in the void and also against the infested and our corpus build we've got convulsion and deep freeze to bring up magnetic and pathogen rounds to further increase the poison damage on the weapon and deal with those fleshy corpus units. Now you can use eroding blight on the weapon, but you are going to lose one of those um, one of those elemental mods, which really does knock the damage down of the weapon by quite a lot. And for the boost that you get from the mod, I don't feel it's personally worth it. But this is the build that I would go for if I was going to do that. This is the corrosive build, so Hornet Strike, Barrel Diffusion, Lethal Torrent. Pistol Mutation, Eroding Blight, Ruinous Extension, and then obviously Convulsion and Pathogen Rounds for that uh, Corrosive Damage. I personally wouldn't use this build, but if you wanted to use Eroding Blight, then this is where this is what I would go for. Okay, so now onto my recommendation as to whether I feel the Emberless is worth the time, effort, and resources invested into maxing it. And the answer to that is, yes, I think it is. The Emberless originally was a weapon that I used and hated it with an absolute passion. I put it back in my arsenal and completely forgot about it. As a weapon, originally, I thought it was a contender for one of the worst weapons in the game. But recently, I've had a clan member talking to me about it and wanting me to do a max build for it. Because I would be seriously surprised by the results. And boy was I ever surprised. The introduction of that ruinous extension mod has absolutely transformed the Emberlist in, from an in-your-face killer to a weapon that's got a bit of a range to it and can be used at a safer distance without fear of knockdown. And when you couple that with the Prime Damage Mutation that was introduced by the Void Trader a couple of weeks ago, then you have a very competent weapon that isn't going to run out of ammo the instant you've pulled the trigger. Now, do I think it's anywhere near being one of the top secondaries in the game? No, it can't compete with some of the top secondary weapons out there, but it is easily and solidly in the top quarter. The damage potential is fantastic, especially since you don't have to worry about punch through or worry about the fact that there might be more than one target, and you can take down entire groups of enemies at once. The Emberlist is really very versatile, and the ability for it to have three different elemental procs on there potentially can really mean that it is very balanced and can deal faction specific damage over multiple enemy weaknesses. Now the Emberless is clan tech research, meaning that you have to be a member on the clan with the completed research done to pick up the blueprint. In addition to that, the Emberless is not the cheapest of weapons, needing 5 mutagen mass, 15,000 salvage, 1500 circuits and a former. So while this weapon is definitely worth it, just remember that it is not cheap. It also comes with a mastery rank requirement of 8, one of the highest of any weapons in the game, so that is another thing to bear in mind when looking at the Ember List. So in essence, decent damage, decent range and ammo efficiency when modded correctly, and a wide, multi-hitting cloud of damage. The Ember List really is a weapon that deserves dusting off, putting former into and given a second chance. It's an interesting weapon, it's fun to use, and it's actually pretty good. Definitely the most surprising out of any weapon that I've tested recently. Now a quick little thing from me, I just wanted to say my clan, Yar Gaming, are still recruiting. 
we have a fully built dojo research is usually going within an hour or so of the item coming out and we're still working on the pigments right now so we can color the dojo as well but more importantly since we have raids coming up on the horizon in update 16 we are starting to think about putting raid teams together so if we are looking for people that would like to join our small clan and would like to be a part of these raid teams so if you're interested just shoot me a message in game and we'll sort out getting you into the clan as always guys many thanks for the support as we're now closing in on 1500 subs it's been absolutely incredible and i love providing content for all of you so please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe it helps me out a ton and i shall see you in the next episode